Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. That's right. It's Wednesday. You've arrived at the right place. We're getting all the latest and greatest reviews of all the cool stuff coming out in the worlds of metal, prog rock, hard rock, classic rock, jazz fusion. That's what we do here on SOT today. We're going to take a look at the brand new sixth studio album from this very cool band from Georgia. They are called Baroness. The album is called Stone. As with all the Baroness album covers, very cool artwork, although this one's not completely color-coded like normal, right? It's got a little bit of everything on it. You got blues, you got reds, you got golds, you got yellows, you got a little, little bit of green, right? All sorts of cool stuff. Let's take a look at this bad boy. Okay, this, uh, I have the, I guess you call this the deluxe digipack, right? It's got a bonus disc of some live tracks. That's always fun. Oops, of course. This is what the original hype sticker looked like. And then the booklet, which uh, has got your lyrics. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Get out the magnifying glass. Uh, let's put this back in there. So, if you've been following the career of Baroness, of course, what kind of music do Baroness play? Ah, it's heavy metal. It's kind of sludgy, kind of progressive. Very progressive, actually. Um, kind of stonery, maybe, right? Very accessible, though, I would say. Pretty damn heavy. Great vocals, lots of riffy guitars, cool trippy guitar solos and things like that. Their last couple of albums have been a little bit more accessible. The older stuff is a little heavier, a little sludgier, right? Last couple albums, they've, they've mixed it up a bit, added some experimentation, uh, some more arguably radio-friendly hooks and things here and there. It still sounds like Baroness, as does this particular album. And uh, this is like the uh, second album in a row with the same lineup. They don't do that too often, right? Here we've got uh, the leader of the band, John Baisley. John Dyer Baisley is his full name, right? Lead vocals, guitars, percussion, keyboards. He's the artist on the uh, albums as well. It's, that's his cover art here. Uh, Gina Gleason. New to the band on the previous album. She's here once again on lead and rhythm guitars, backing vocals, some keyboards and percussion and things. Nick Jost on bass, keyboards, backing vocals, strings, synths and stuff. And Sebastian Thompson on drums, percussion, synths, and things. Right. So we've got, uh, oh geez, what we got about uh, 10 tracks on this particular album. And then on this two, you got a whole bunch of live tracks. So, um, yeah, as far as the songs go, they get better every time you hear them. First time I listened to the album, I was like, ah, oh, this is good. Typical Baroness album, right? I don't know that anything really stood out. And the second listen, and the third listen, by then I was pretty much hooked. Um, album starts and ends kind of a more acoustic fashion you've got embers and bloom kind of book in the albums but everything in between is damn good uh last word there's like the first like three or four tracks after that opener embers just kind of hit you with these great frantic riffs and just lots of bottom end and you know catchy choruses last word is great uh good galloping guitar and drumming going on there and then you got uh, beneath the rose which is really cool last word also has a cool guitar solo uh she plays a really cool like come almost like kind of like if edge from u2 went metal that's kind of what it's like very cool very kind of trippy sounded very cool uh you got beneath the rose is killer and that's got some really cool riffs on it very kind of hard charging head banging type stuff uh choir picks up that's very very similar type riff to choir but the song itself is very different, very cool. Then you got the dirge, it's exactly as it sounds. Very cool, love the guitar work. Then, perhaps three of my favorite songs on the album. You got uh, Anodyne, which is great. Has some really cool kind of like interweaving, almost like Thin Lizzy style uh, harmony guitar parts. Very cool, very heavy. Shine is terrific. Shine is very accessible, very catchy. I could see Shine being the song that maybe gets kind of pushed on this album. Love it. And then Magnolia. Magnolia is cool. It's got this weird kind of like atmospheric beginning, kind of jangly, and then all of a sudden the big riffing comes in. It's also kind of catchy, but it's like brooding and 
really, really good. Under the Wheel is cool as well, and then it ends kind of as it begins with Bloom, which is kind of like melancholy and acoustic and things like that. So, uh, yeah, this is really good. Really, really good. Um, I think I'm enjoying this more than the last one. You know, they've still got, the, got you know, the Red album is great, the Purple album is great. I mean, they've got some albums to me that are just, I don't know if they'll ever top them. But this is quite good. This is going to, uh, I think the more I listen to this, the more I'm going to like it. And it's like, it's just, it, I, I really dig it now. I'm going to give it four out of five stars. Really dig it now. I think going forward, the more I listen to this, if it keeps growing on me like it has, this is going to push that rating up a bit and uh, push this fairly higher in their overall ranking. You know, Chris Canzanari and I just ranked the uh, catalog of these guys not that long ago. It was like earlier this year, maybe something like that. But um, yeah, this is a good one. I think you fans will like this. Uh, this is on their own label, by the way. It's called uh, Abraxan Hymns, right? That's her own record label. Uh, as far as the bonus discs, you have, uh, like I said, live tracks culled from uh, mostly their last tour from 2022. You got The Birthing is on here, A Horse Cold, a horse cold Golgotha, Eula, Green Theme, Desperation Burns, and I Do Anything. So you got some really cool tracks, and they're recorded from all sorts of all over the place, Austin, Texas, Chicago, Salt Lake City. Uh, yeah, that's what you got. So, uh, yeah handful of tracks from 2002 2022 uh and they sound great i mean it's been really good sounding band live i've never seen them live i would like to one of these days but uh, based on the live stuff i've seen like on youtube and things uh good band live and uh it's cool to have some extra live stuff on here as a bonus but the album itself is what it's all about so check it out stone is the name of the album Four out of five star. Really good. Could even rank higher because I really dig this a lot. So uh, if you've heard it, let us know what you think of it down in the comments below. If you haven't, go check it out and come back, report in. What did you think? And visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as opposed to And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also down below, we get the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations, our merch page, and our Cameo page. That's all listed down below in the video description. So thank you in advance for all your support there. And we'll see you here with more stuff. Should have a new, hopefully, The Chronicles of Father Robin. Very cool Prague album from Norway. Uh, as well as a brand new Trevor Rabin. All right. Trevor Rabin is back with a solo album called Rio. So that's coming up as well. So uh, stay tuned for that and more. I am Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.